the name of Jesus. I, I need us to, if, if you can help me to prepare the text I'm going to be reading in the Amplified, also in the New Living Translation, but we will start with the New King James Version. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 28 and verses 21, in fact, I, I, I couldn't wait to speak to you on this subject. It was just, you know, my heart pressing that, you know, I come home and I share with you uh, this uh, word that the Lord has given for the month of November, the strange acts of God. Come on, somebody. The strange acts of God. Uh, Isaiah 28 verses 21. The Bible says, For the Lord will rise up as at Mount Perazim. He will be angry as in the valley of Gibeon. That he may do his work. His awesome work. And bring to pass his acts. His unusual acts. Glory to God. Um, I, I, I need us to read it in the New Living Translation. It says this. The Lord will come as he did against the, Philistine, the Philistines at Mount Perazim. The Lord will come as he did against the Philistines at Mount Perazim. And against the Amorites in Gibeon. He will come to do. What? A strange, come on, unusual thing. Which one is this? Amplified? And I'll say, it will come and do, come on, a strange one, an unusual thing, and it will destroy his own people. Look at what it says in my version. It says, the Lord will come as he did against the Philistines at Mount Perazim, against the Amorites and at Gibeon. He will come to do a strange thing. He will come to do an unusual deed. In the Amplified, and then we sit. For the Lord will rise up again as at Mount Perazim. He will stir up as in the valley of Gibeon. To do what? To do his work. His strange work. Come on. And bring past his act. His strange act. I like it in my version. It says he will come to do his work. His unusual and incredible work. And to accomplish his work. His extraordinary work. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. May you be seated on the head of your enemies tonight Amen. in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The strange acts of God. What a funny topic. What a funny title. What a strange title. Pastor, what are you talking about? The strange acts of God. What, 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 what are you trying to say? The strange acts of God. I want us to notice something very important is that number one, we must know that our God is the God of ordinary things. We often attribute to God only extraordinary things. But I want you to tell you tonight that God is also the God of simple things. God is a God of a two-minute prayer. But he's also a God of seven-hour prayers. He's also a God of 24 hours non-stop. You knew when you stopped, you started praying, but you did not know when you stopped praying. I heard a testimony of a mighty man of God. They said that he had such a gift of prayer. That they will ask him to close the prayer. He will begin to pray. Closing the service. But before you know it. It is tomorrow at noon. That he says amen. He did not see time flies. He is the God of those that can pray long hours. But he is also the God of. I need you Lord. Please save me. God is the God of the simple. But he is also the God of the complex. He's not just a God who focuses on, on, on complex issues. He's not just a God who focuses on, on, on extraordinary works. He's also the God 
of the ordinary. But you must note that his specialty is complicated things. His specialty is what? Complicated things. You know, <laughs> uh, I, I, I started my ministry career as a keyboard player. You know, anybody that is a jazz musician can play simple chords. But their specialty is not simple chords. Just because I can do simple things does not mean that my speciality is simple things. I, I, I can do the ordinary things, things that men can do. I can do too. Things that you men can do, I too can do. But my, my, my giftedness, my uniqueness, what makes me me, what makes me unique, what I specialize in is extraordinary works. Friends, I have come to notice that you know God is God and he does things that science can explain but he also does things that goes beyond any human vocabulary can express. I am here to tell you that there are things that God can do that every man can tell this is this. But there are things that God does. We don't find words and all our mouth is just left open and no voice comes out. And I lift up my voice tonight and I declare, may the Lord do something in your life that nobody will find a vocabulary for it. They will just be looking at you in awe, in shock. Their mouth, my God, on their, their hand on their mouth. Because there are no words that can come out to express which that the Lord is about to do in your life. I speak an unusual miracle in your life. In Jesus' name. Oh yes. I like it when God does complex things. That's the reason why I told you that God specializes in complex things. God specializes in things that are not simple. You know, in, in, in Romans chapter 12, uh, 11, rather, in Romans 11, verses 32, the Bible says that all oh, the depth of the riches of both the wisdom and the knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgment and his ways past finding out in in the new uh, in the king in the good news translation it says how great are god's riches how deep are his wisdom and knowledge who can explain his decisions who can understand his ways i have figured beloved that when God begins to operate at the dimension of God, there is no man on earth who can understand God. There is no man on earth who can explain the deeds of God. Listen, people are getting all the way to PhD to just explain how creation was formed. Because the ways of God I say it again, the ways of God goes beyond human understanding. That's the, right, that's the reason why I say tonight that the wisdom of God is unsearchable. It is too deep for the mind to comprehend. Somebody say it's too deep. Or say it again, it's too deep. Have you ever been in the presence of someone who is saying things, but at the end of the day, you don't understand what they are saying? I mean, you can hear the words coming out of their mouth. They are not talking any other language. They are talking English. But it's just that the level to which they are talking, you are asking yourself, what are they saying? God can be speaking. Unless he opens up your ears, there's no way for you to understand him. Somebody said, it's too deep. Say it again, it's too deep. Now, friends... I made some research this afternoon to bring into perspective which that the Lord has given me as assignment for us in this season and especially concerning this subject to just show you how God is infinitely powerful. Professor Elisabetta Barberio of the University of Melbourne 
wrote a paper titled The Pursuit. And in that paper, she came to the conclusion, Minister Treasure, that we only know 5% of the whole universe. All the universe. The mind of man have only been exposed to 5%. Which means 95% of the universe is still a mystery to man. All the scientists from Einstein to anybody you can call. They have only access 5%. Of the knowledge of the universe in which we live. Now, what is happening in the 95? I went further and I realized that almost 60% of our, of our earth mass is composed of water. How many of you know that? Yeah. Almost six, over 60% of the earth mass is composed of water. But how many of you knows that out of all the waters that are on the earth, only 35% have been explored? 35%. What happens to the 65? What is in that 65? You think you know. But you only have a minimal access to information. Now, let me tell you breaking news. When God was dealing with Job, he asked Job, do you know how deep the waters are? Have you been to the foundation of the mountains? This is the level to which God operates. He says, I am not just the God of simple, but I am the God of the complex. I give you 5% of knowledge of the entire universe, all the galaxies, you know, billions and billions of galaxies, but we are just a point in this whole universe and God masters every details of it. That's the reason why I have come to the conclusion that this can only be the God who do strange things. Now please let me bring it into perspective. We need to understand what is that word strange. What is the word strange? According to the dictionary. Maybe my introduction will just be the entire message for tonight. According to the dictionary. The term strange depicts or means unusual. Somebody say unusual. It means that it is something out of the norm. Not something you see every day. When God says I will do strange things. He's not doing something you have seen before. He's not doing something you are anticipating. He's not doing something that he told you about. He is doing something out of the agenda. He has prophesied. He has decreed. He has explained things that he has not yet spoken. Oh, I decree and I declare there are things that God is getting ready to do at Ramah that he has not yet announced. Ah, I wish I was talking to the right people. I say that there are things that God is getting ready to do at Ramah that he has not announced. You know, when something has been announced, you can expect it. But there are things that arrive without an announcement. And I came here to tell you that God is about to do an unusual thing. Why is that thing unusual? Because it is out of anything we have seen before. Brother Isaac, one day Jesus is on the boat and there is wind beating. The Bible said the wind is beating, the wind is beating, the wind is beating. And the disciples go wake him up and say, Master, why is it that you are sleeping and we are perishing? He said, oh, you of little faith, why is it that you are fearful? The Bible said he stood and spoke to the wind. He did what? What did he do? What did he do? They have never seen nobody speak to the wind before. Now, they were surprised and say, you know, maybe Jesus is just getting emotional and talking. You know, he's talking, he's talking to the wind. Who is he talking to? The Bible says he rebuked the wind. And the wind ceased. 
the disciples look at each other. Who can this be? Because what Jesus had just done was never done before. Who is this that he speaks immediately and the wind sees? We are not talking about a human. We are talking about a force you never see but you can feel it. We are talking about a force that in the midst of water who speaks to the weather and the weather obeys and they say who can this be? To whom that the wind and the waves does what? Obey. Because he's a God of unusual things. He's not a God of the usual things. That's the reason why I challenge you not to get used to God. When you think you have known God, he surprised you. When you think that you have mastered him and you know how he works, he creates ways to which you could never think. When you just thought that ah, he always used ABC to bless me and all of a sudden he brings a stranger from a country you know nobody and say come and bless my son. When you thought that all the doors that God will open will pass through such and such person and all of a sudden God brings somebody that knows you neither from far or close and he says the Lord has sent me to you I come and I declare in the name of Jesus that strangers will knock at your door and they will say the Lord sent me to tell you you are blessed the Lord sent me to tell you here is a check the Lord sent me to give you this house the Lord sent me to give you this contract people you have no idea who they are the Bible says one day mama light Abraham was sitting in his tent. I am sure it is too hot in the desert. He said, let me get some wind. Can I get a, get a chair? He's, he's, he's there, he's, he's there in, 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 the, in the tent. And, and Sarah is busy cooking in the kitchen. And so Abraham is sitting on the tent, getting some fresh air all in the desert. And he sees four men walking. And he perceived, he looked at them. He said, no, 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 no. These are not people that we see here every day. Can I please invite them? What? he did not know he just invited God in his own house he has been expecting to have a child for many years but he never knew when will that happen but that day when he welcomed strangers in his house he did not know that he just opened the door to strange acts of God I came to tell somebody here while you are sitting home minding your own business you shall hear a knock on on your door if the Lord established me over this house I decree and I declare a phone call an email a knock on your house can you help me tell your neighbor say stop avoiding calls oh I don't know this number that is how you are missing a visitation oh no me i don't take i don't take numbers i don't know this season beloved take it nobody will do any harm to you i said take it take it take it you never know what is it that is gonna answer on the other side are, are, are you are you mr lukama yes i am how can i help you i have been mandated by god and i've been given an assignment i heard you are moving into january 14 into your new building and you have bills the lord has assigned me to bless you i am talking about the god who commands strangers i don't need to know the person they just need to be known by god i have i have little limitation in who i know but God knows seven billion who can bless me. Oh, God knows. Uh, I said seven billion who can bless me. I know a few in my life. Uh, but God knows seven billions he can touch across the universe. Uh, shake your neighbor and say, God knows more than I know. If somebody comes and knock at your door and say, I come on behalf of Pastor Gilord. You don't need to know the person. You need to know the person who represent, who send them. 
if this if you recognize the name he said this person Gelodukama. which Gelodukama? no the one from Rama church oh okay you will welcome them not in their name but on the in the name of the one who has sent them now I don't need to know who will bless me but all I need to know is that the God I pray to is the one that sent them or oh, listen to me in the name of Jesus there are some situation you are wondering how will God provide how will God open how will God do this but I am here to tell you just as it was for Peter the Bible said the church was praying in the house and all of a sudden there was a knock on the door Rhoda went and saw that it was Peter she could not believe her eyes she ran in the house out of excitement and recognized that it was Peter I am declaring God will use unusual methods. Somebody say unusual methods. Say it again unusual methods. Oh yes. He will use unusual methods. Because what is strange it is not necessarily bizarre. It is just new to us. That's the reason why I often tell you, don't be in a hurry to label everything fake when it is something you have never seen. What makes a thing fake? It is the effort behind it. But listen, there are things that God does. Even yourself do not know how to explain it. Listen, the guy got healed by Jesus. He was blind. He, Jesus laid hand on him. He did not know who Jesus was. They were telling him, how is it that you are walking? How is it that you are going? Where are you going? Who healed you? He said, I do not know. All I know, I was blind. Come on. I am talking about somebody here. You will not know how to testify. All you will tell people, all I know is that yesterday I slept on the door. I slept in the streets. But today I have a title deed to my house. I do not know how it happened. Yesterday I was jobless. But here today I am sitting in a corner office. I do not know how. Somebody say surprising. Something that you have not seen coming. Listen. If it is five minutes to eight o'clock. A company calls you. And say. Hello. Are you a sal comma? Yes I am. Uh, we have been recommended. Uh, to give you a contract. Who recommended me? No, it doesn't matter. Will you be willing to come on Monday and sign the paperwork? Most of us will believe it's a scam. Yes. I myself will believe. Five minutes to eight. Who is that, that is still in office giving contract? And who is it that recommended you? That's the reason why when you are in a season of strange acts of God, you need to have an open mind. Maybe, maybe, just maybe. Let me see how it goes. Because there is no, uh, there is no loss in going to find out whether it is true or not. And let's just say for argument's sake, because we are in a season of believing. You go on Monday and they tell you, well, there's somebody that insisted that this contract must come to you. It's going to be election time in Congo and they want you to supply all the t-shirt for that campaign. Put the price. You tell yourself. In that moment, Minister Treasure, you would forget that you were praying for money. You didn't hear me. In that season, you'd forget that you were saying, Lord, send me money. But then it did not come as cash raining from heaven. 
It came from a strange opportunity. Yes, yes, yes. Why is it surprising? Is because you did not expect it or anticipate it. God does not always work with our expectation. God can work beyond our expectation. The sovereignty of God says that I do not need men for me to do it. Men do not need to demand it for me to do it. There are things that God does, Mama Gaela, to just show that he's that God. Absolutely no reason. Absolutely no reason. Other than showing that he is. God does not always do things because we prayed. He does things out of his sovereignty. That's the reason why. God, show off please on my life. If you feel like you need to show off. Eh, I am here now. I am here. If, if you want to prove to people in my surrounding, you are that kind of God. Lord, I am here now. I don't know about you, but I feel like in this church, there are people who have the faith like me and say, Lord, if you want to show off to this generation that you are God, I am. There are messages God will preach without a preacher. He just does it out of his sovereignty. People knew how you were yesterday. And when they see you the next day, they are wondering, is he the one or is he not the one? The Bible said the man that was sitting at the, oh my God, at the gate called beautiful. The Bible said everybody saw him lame in his both his feet. They saw the guy, but they could not see them. They could not understand the man who was walking, jumping, leaping, praising God. That day, I can tell you and guarantee you, the sermon was the man walking, limping because everybody began to wonder is it this not the one we left at the door look at your neighbor and say God's sovereignty needs no reason for him to be God oh yes that's the reason why sometimes God does not draw from our faith he draws from himself he walks on himself. Tell me where was our faith when he said let there be light? Where was our faith when he said let the heaven bring? Where was our faith when he said let the earth produce? Where was our faith when he said to Adam you will sleep and I will take out of your rib and make a woman? Where was our? These were things just in the dimensions of God. Oh, I need you to understand, beloved, that God does not need to make an announcement. And that's the reason why every day, whether I expect it or I don't expect it, God, do what is in your power to do. Whether I believe it or don't believe it, Lord, do what is in your power to do it. Lord, Lord, whether I have strength for it or not, do what is in your power to do. Lord, whether I can handle it or I cannot, do what is in your power to do. Yes. I will tell you, there are many things that God has done in my life for which I never anticipated he would do. This afternoon, we're just there at the field. I am looking at the land God gave us. Do you know what I used to dream to have? I used to dream to have a way house like this. This was my dream. If, if we can just buy this. Can you imagine? This was my dream. And the only thing you own is this. Not the outside. I called Minister Treasure and said, let's take a walk in this beautiful land. We went outside and we have mulberries in the land. And we started eating like Caleb and Joshua. And say, we indeed saw that the land is good. It flows milk and honey. And these are... Somebody give praise to God. Oh, Rama, you don't hear me? Somebody give praise to God tonight 
Oh, your dream is an insult to his mighty power. Your dream is too small for him. Out of his sovereignty, he will give you bigger than what you need. He will give you greater than what you expected. Oh, I am expecting surprises upon surprises. Surprises upon surprises. Surprises upon surprises. This is how I will finish my year. Surprises upon surprises. Good news upon good news. Unusual things upon unusual things. Ah, this God is too much. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, you can take another 30 seconds. Give him praise. Give him praise. Out of the ordinary, out of the norms, a supersized blessing, a supersized breakthrough. God is able. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I love this God. I love this God. I love this God. I love this God. I love him. 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 Why do I love this God? Because he does not care about my smallness. When people are saying, can anything good come out of Nazareth? He brings the almighty, the living God. Break him born, not in another city, but in a small village called Nazareth and people with pride they will say can anything good come out of Nazareth he's the God of small things but not small things remain small small things become big things small work become great work he's a God who does not care about your smallness he does not care about how small people think you are I am here to tell you you are bigger than you think you are bigger than you can imagine I am prophesying and declaring no matter the size you have no matter the size of your finances you are bigger than you think you have how will you choose me there is no need there are many people qualified many people better equipped but this God will choose. He doesn't care about the smallness, your origin or your, your failures or what, what is it that have happened. God out of his sovereignty, he takes counsel with himself and say, I will choose you. My servant David, I will anoint you with the oil of joy that no man can be able to triumph over you. Hey! Hey! And I'm telling you tonight, you don't need to be anybody's favorites for you to be God's favorites. You don't need to be everybody's friend for you to be God's friend. You don't need to be loved by anybody for you to be loved by God. Even when I was a lovable, Ill. What manner of God is this? What manner of God is this? They were expecting him to be born in the palace. They were expecting, when the star was shining and the star was saying, he's the king, the first thing that the wise men decided to do is that if he's a king, he must be born in the palace. But he's the God of strange acts. He's the God of his strange acts. His wisdom is unsearchable. He can never explain himself. He can never report to no man. He does things because he's God. He despised because he's God. He works because he's God. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. You really had no business choosing a small boy shy, timid, introverts. 
But yet, out of your sovereignty, for you it was the perfect candidate. And we are just grateful, Lord, to do your mission. We are just grateful to do your mission. Listen tonight, I, I don't know even if I will finish my message tonight, but I, I am just trying to tell you that the strange acts of God are indeed coming from a place of his sovereignty. He decided to do things by what men can understand, but he also decided to do things by what men cannot understand. The Bible said to everybody, he spoke to parables, he spoke to dreams, but to Moses, he spoke to him mouth to mouth. Why did he decide to speak to everybody else in mysteries? And yet to Moses, he was speaking in plain word. Because there come a time, beloved, the acts of God are no longer a mystery for us. It is a revelation. Listen, maybe on Sunday I will touch on it. The Bible says, put that verse for me, Isaiah 28. The Bible says, it will be again on Mount Perizim. The Lord will rise up as he did on Mount Perizim. What happened at Mount Perizim? The, what happened in Mount Perizim? You need to go to 2 Samuel chapter 5 verse 20 and 21 for you to understand. David was getting old. People were fighting him. The Philistines were convinced that they were going to defeat David. David in his weakness. The Lord said to him, go up to the mountain. When he went to the place called Bar Perazim, the Lord gave him victory when people expected defeat. The Lord gave victory when people expected defeat. I do not know if everybody is expecting you to fail your year. I do not know if every family member is expecting you to fall pregnant out of wedlock. I do not know if everybody is expecting a scandal to come out of your household or to come out of your home and family. But listen, while they were expecting him to be defeated, the Bible said the Lord drove back the Philistines. In verses 21, please. It says this. Oh my God. It says this. Verse 20. Verse 20. David went to Baal Perazim. And David defeated them there. And he said, The Lord has broken through. There was a voice of opposition. I could not see through the other side. But the Lord has broken broken through my enemies the lord has broken through my enemies before me listen there are places where the lord is going to need you to visit because these places reminds you that you are not a loser listen there are victories you need to re-immerse again in your mind you need to rehearse you 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 need to speak renominate in your mouth the things that the lord has done. he said i will come again as i did on mount perizim where all the odds were against you when nothing gave you a chance and all of a sudden by the strange act of god out of nowhere it is your name that is being called out of nowhere it is you who's being crowned out of nowhere tonight as the holy spirit is resting in this place there is a wave of god that is operating in this building I need every man and woman to stand in this place. My time is up.